What's up, everybody? It's Lee. Uh, first part of a two-part episode with Coach Pete Whitney today. Uh, we sent this out on our Facebook page. He is a, a former collegiate coach. He's coached at every level. He really knows the game. So the first part of this episode is actually mailbag. Uh, we asked you for questions. You asked some great questions. We did about 45 minutes with him, and he's going to answer your questions about what it takes to get to the collegiate level, the pathways, if you want to call them that, the journey to the collegiate level, and then what coaches look for in parents uh, as they approach the collegiate level of hockey. So a lot of inf informative stuff, really from the from the might level up for this one. Um, also, approaching the holidays, as we say every episode right now, if you're looking for a great deal for yourself, for your kid, for your team, email us directly, team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. We'll send you over all the deals that we have cultivated for you to make your holiday shopping easy. Uh, and we always appreciate the support, to be perfectly honest. You are the best audience in hockey. Just love running into you in the open and love getting your emails about... Um, how you, you 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 find that there's a whole community of people out there that support you in the way that you're, you know, raising your kid, raising your hockey player, and 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 as we walk this journey together. So, without further ado, uh, enjoy part one of our two-part series with Pete Whitney here on Our Kids Play Hockey. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world. Welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. We got a reoccurring guest here, Pete Whitney, college coach, post university, sends a lot of kids to college hockey, to pro hockey, Hobie Baker finalists. He's been here before. If you want his intro, go back and listen to the last interview we did with him, which was just a few episodes back. But uh, Pete Whitney is, is a friend of the show. We are absolutely ecstatic to have you back again, Pete. Thanks for being here on Our Kids Play Hockey. No, you're welcome. It's good to be back, Lee. Everybody else, Christy and Mike, good to see you guys. It's good to have you back. I also have to introduce the people you just mentioned. Christy Casciano burns Mike Benelli, the regulars. Every episode's over, uh, well over 100 episodes now. I think this is our two-year mark, guys. Uh, super well-established. I uh, want to give a quick shout-out to our audience once again for putting us in the top 10 uh, and uh, really making this show something special that we love to do, and it attracts people like Pete to come and uh, <laughs> be reoccurring guests. So, uh, diving right into it, Pete, we, uh, we put out there that we were going to have you back on and we got several questions here from our mailbag for you. So I want to start there. And then after these questions, we're going to dive into, uh, what it takes to really start a program from scratch. It's something you did at post really successfully. And I'm not sure people fully understand, uh, what it takes to start from, from nothing, right? Cause it's, a, it's a little bit different. There's no history. There's no culture. You have to develop all that. So for those of you listening, again, stay tuned for that because that's going to be a really great conversation. But let's jump into the mailbag. Uh, first question comes from Sam for you. And it's what can parents do behind the scenes to help guide their child to play college level hockey? I think, I'm not sure what age we're talking here, but just in general, be supportive. Be supportive to them, right? Number one. Uh, number two, don't criticize them. If they want to talk about their game, how things went, have that conversation. Uh, number three is support the coaches because the worst thing you can do is sit at the kitchen table and have dinner on a Sunday and talk about how the coach doesn't know what he's doing or they made a mistake or he should have done this or she should have done that, that kind of thing. And the biggest reason for that is obviously the, 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 the short-term negativity that's clear, but long-term is you're, you're creating the, uh, an atmosphere where I'm going to make an excuse for you. And that's not, that's not a good thing. So supporting not only the, your player, supporting the coach and the coaching staff, and then honestly kind of chipping in and helping out wherever, wherever you can. I know a lot with a lot of little local youth organizations. I see that little snack bars, parents, clubs, things like that. Try to get involved with that kind of stuff and, and uh, enjoy yourself a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, the, 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 well, so I'm probably guilty of all that, but so basically, <laughs> so I think, I think, uh, I think one of the other things too, that I really try to, in part on my guys and even the players that I'm with and the parents that I talk to, right. is just not, don't compare yourself to other players and where they're going. Like it's your journey, right? It's your, like, you can't say, Oh, well, so-and-so is doing this and they're going here. Or like, it, it really is that individual player, right? Pete, that it's, it's the, it's what, you know, again, unless you're getting recruited for a division one full ride scholarship and your, and your ultimate, uh, 
you know, destination will be to play pro hockey, which is, you know, obviously that happens. And there's a lot of kids that do that, but most of it is really, you know, finding out and aligning, you know, what are your, what are your likes? What are your dislikes? Do you like big schools? Do you like small schools? What's your major going to be? I mean, really that piece of, you know, not saying, well, these other five kids on the team are looking here, uh, but really focusing on your player and what their needs are. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100. percent I mean, you, and you see it a lot, right? Mike Manelli is is gaining a lot of interest. People are people are interested in him, potential Division One player. So Mike Manelli is going over to Program X. You know what? We're, we're let's go. We're going to go to Program X too. So now you go to Program X and you're with Mike Manelli, which is great. However, they're all there to see Mike Manelli. Yeah. So if I stay where I am and I excel there and just get better as a player. Now that's my time, right? And like you're saying, you have to separate yourself and create who you are as a player and not just follow. And there's a lot of kids that I've seen over the years that have played on the quote unquote best teams that never played anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. They've won championships, right? But they, but they really haven't, uh, they, they've won them because somebody else won them. Right. I'm not that interested in when I recruit players, I don't ask them at the squirt and peewee levels uh, how many state championships they won, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So creating your own identity, not following, because that's an easy trap to fall into, right? Mike Vanelli's getting a lot of interest. He's going here. I'm going there. Oh, the next year, Mike's jumping to this team. Well, I'm going to try for that team too. And it, it just, it's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Pete, I only came to this podcast because Michael Bonelli was here. Are you trying to tell me that that was wrong in your assessment? And Christy, too. You I mean, follow my coattails. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing, obviously. Uh, you know, yeah, podcasts Pete, don't come. No, okay. Just make it – Pete, one more follow-up on that. Um, you know, I know a, a coach right now who's a college coach and is dealing with a lot of parent issues where parents are audibly causing a problem. Let me just put it that way. At the games, behind the scenes – um, and she's in a position where uh, we're having conversations almost weekly here about how to deal with that. Right. So Wait, you're talking about college level. I'm talking about college level. All right. So, oh, okay. so it's not St. Michael. It's not St. Michael's Christy. <laughs> no, know, no, it's, yeah, it's not say. that team. I promise you. That's not that team. But you know, a lot of the conversations here are about communication, um, so forth and so on. So now here's the deal. I'm not going to ask about how she should deal with that situation because that's, that's, you know, every coach has to deal with that. What I do want to focus on is from a college coach perspective, it is extremely unattractive as a college coach when I have to deal with the player and the parent and separately, and there's not communication going on. So just to kind of, I'm going to kind of prompt you here, but obviously talent is very attractive to a college coach, but the type of person you are, the type of character you have of, can you carry a conversation with me? Can you come up to me? Do you do community service? Are you a are you a good person, right? Do you need your parents to talk for you? And I'm not knocking parents, right? But we're talking about developing young people into young adults. This is an important part of it, right? Speak for yourself, have an opinion. You said earlier, support the coaches. Well, there's absolutely going to be situations as parents where you don't like, quote unquote, or support the coach. You still have a responsibility to teach your kid how to deal with that type of adversity. Right. So I'm, I'm th- again, the prompt here is you got to create a whole person, right? It's not just the talent. Well, the biggest thing with that, and you, you touched on it, I think is you have a golden opportunity here as a coach and as, as a student athlete to, to grow as a, as a, as a person and to learn how to be your own advocate. So obviously that's got to be part of the discussion, right? Team, team meeting, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about anything. We can agree to disagree which is fine because that's part of the real world. And that's kind of what we're trying to help. Another thing we're trying to help you uh, learn here as you become a a student athlete and maybe move on after, maybe don't. But if you can take with you the ability to talk to someone who you feel is an authority, in this case, it's a coach, maybe it translates down the road to a, to a boss, you'll, you'll be a better person. And it's about what we're doing. It, it, it's about us. I mean, once you get to the college piece, that's one of the most wonderful things about it is we have our little, our own little fraternities, our little sororities, whatever you want to call them, right? We have our own niche 
where I love you, mom, I love you, dad, but this isn't your place. Right. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. I mean, right now, you know, my daughter's in college. The only conversations we have with the coach might be regarding an injury. Sophia, you know, just suffered a shoulder injury. So we have a conversation with him about that. What's the treatment? What's the trainer say? How should we proceed? But as far as the team itself, the only other conversations we might have is, you know, are we going to have, you know, something, you know, team related, a uh, team dinner, you know, uh, where all the parents get to know each other. We, there are no other conversations, right. unless maybe if something developed and it was a question about, you know, your kid's character. Yes, maybe you might want to jump in there and say, hey, just so you know, um, you know, we don't particularly but, like the decision made here. But it, all other conversations need to uh, happen between the student athlete and the coach. Um, they're old enough. They need to handle it on their own. Parents shouldn't get be getting involved in any other level of hockey. Yeah, I, I, I agree all from all of that. I mean, I'm just going to come from a perspective as a, as coaching in college and knowing, like, with a, with parents. Like for my level, I was I was I was coaching at the Division three level, so I didn't get you know I wasn't at Michigan's you know where everything was given to the athlete and everything was get, like the parent literally didn't even have to exist. Like the the, the student got everything. Right. I don't even know. I, I didn't, wouldn't even matter if they had a mom or dad because they were an athlete. They were a, they were they were a vehicle to academics and winning and everything else. But I think at, at a lot of levels, club level, you know, you, you know, l division three level, the coaches really do love the parent involvement from the perspective, Christy, that you were kind of saying, like, listen, you want to do if I'm going to be you know, we're going to be going up to Buffalo for a weekend and you're from Buffalo and you want to have the team over for dinner. Great. We love yeah. that kind of stuff. If yeah. you're a parent, and you want to help with fundraising. If you want to help with some special events, if you now, it, but it can't be a quid pro quo, right? It can't be like, well, if I do this, then my kid gets ice time. Totally. So exactly. think so thinking about the recruitment yeah. process, if I'm aligning myself with coach Whitney, right. And, and my kid is in that process and, mm -hmm. and, and my player moves into that school and that, that situation, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tightrope, but it can be done and it, and it, it could be navigated. Right. Pete, that, that you find parents that have special gifts from what they do professionally and time-wise that can help organizations that don't get all the great resources that other organizations get. As long as you know where that line is with, right. don't ask me about ice time. Don't ask me about yeah. play, yeah. but if you can help us enhance the rest of the student body, I love that. I think that's great. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, when we did our fundraising, we had that. We had a, a parent that was was great that would help organize and kind of keep the kids on track. And, and it was good. It was it was very good. But I mean, life in general, right? Don't do something expecting something in return because right. generally speaking, you'll be disappointed. Yeah, right, and and it does help that your best players sometimes are, are their best are are your best uh your your parents are, of your best players. <laughs> you yeah, know, you love that. When, like, when, oh, please, when, when that be, scenario, be the player that's I win. never have to worry that's about. That's a win-win right? Win right there. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say like uh, the more you don't expect from people, actually, the easier your life becomes, and you're always surprised when people do nice things for you. A uh, couple of quick notes here. One is, uh, Christy, I'm glad you brought up Sophia. Obviously. We're wishing her the best. I know she's she's dealing with an injury right now. So uh, yeah. just a shout out from our team to to, Thank to, you. to her right now. Yeah, uh, we love Sophia on the show. Um, <laughs> she's been the inspiration for a lot of lot of topics and a lot of books. Right. We'll put it that way. A mm -hmm. um, couple couple quick ones too. So parents that are listening, right? Um, especially the younger parents, kind of the 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 U twelve down. Uh, in regards to this question, remember these good habits. You can start them early. Um, I'll give you a really simple example. I was talking to a parent on my my son's team the other day and her kid doesn't try the equipment and she goes, I have to take it out. I said, make him take it out. Start the habit now of drying your equipment and it'll follow him through. So it's the same thing with these little tiny micro conversations. Uh, questions for you parents. Does your son or daughter thank their coach and the ref after each game? Thank you for coaching me today. Thank you for refing today. Um, are they respectful to the other parents? These are little tiny things. You start doing eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, they carry through. All right. And again, if, if your kid's older than that, start doing them now. But these little, um, 
micro interactions, these little understandings of no, you go do it, you go say thank you, you show respect. And then parents, obviously, we have to lead by example too. They go a, a, a really long way. Right. And if you've never done that and your kids never talk to anybody and they're 18, they're going to have a hard time communicating. And I want to make this clear. This generation, which, which I'm not bashing, they already have a hard time communicating. All mm -hmm. right. They, they've been on uh, phones their whole lives. They text to communicate and they've just been through a massive pandemic where they couldn't communicate in person with anybody. So in my opinion, I have some empathy there for that age group of we as parents and, and as leaders need to kind of encourage face to face communication a little bit more. Um, Pete, did you want to comment on that before I kind of go to the next thing? Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention that you brought up about the younger parents. I think one of the best things a younger parent can do is when you go to a product and I'm talking, I'm talking essentially mites mm -hmm. at this point, because that's really right. The introductory before the whole learn to play thing. I think mites is really kind of where it starts. Uh, look for an older parent who has a mite. Right. Because there's a good chance they have a peewee or a bantam or a squirt and they've been through it before and align yourself with that person, at least conversationally, because they have been through what you've been through and they can be a great resource for you to kind of guide you a little bit. Simple things about what about the program? Hey, what, how long has this, this coach been coaching? How long is that? What, what do I expect moving forward? Like what's this program What's this program like? Tell me what you like about it. Just a good conversation about it. But rather than essentially a bunch of new people trying to figure it all out, find somebody who's who has had a had a boy or a girl that in in the in the program and have a good yeah. conversation with them. That's a fantastic piece of advice. Um, and again, it's like parenting, right? I think a lot of people. I I'd, I'd even put myself in this a little bit. When you have your first kid. You know, sometimes it's easy to fall in that trap of I'm the first parent ever, <laughs> you know, where you forget that people have been doing this for literally tens of thousands of years. You know, it's OK to ask. Right. It, it's the same thing with hockey. You're not the first might ever. Um, and there's a lot of lot of information that can come from that. I'm not, and I'm not trying to sound condescending with that. It's just a fantastic point. Right. Ask around. Ask about the coaches. And look, um, and look down the hall. If you see a guy like yeah. me, like somebody grumbling to themselves and and pointing and kind of pacing and rolling their eyes, don't go, don't go to that person. That's not you. Run Mike. the Come other on. way. Yeah, yeah. Run the other way. Yeah. Don't go, yeah. don't go yeah. to the jaded, don't go to the jaded. Uh, yeah. Parent. We call that the Benelli back off. Yeah. Just, 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 don't go, go, just go see that guy. See that, see the guy crazy, the crazy guy over there. Yeah. His kids yeah. have played hockey. Yeah, higher. They, they've, he's come through the system already. <laughs> Don't yeah. go to that guy. So I never trust anybody over 40 with no gray hair. It's not real. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Better, better <laughs> parents are a great resource. Yeah, you can't they, deny that. Right. right? Are, even, though, I, even though you are a little grumpy down the halls um, yeah. and people like to stay away from you, but you can learn so much from them, especially if you're trying to fit your schedule with a good hockey schedule. Ask the parent, I mean, what does this coach require? How does he feel about my kid going to a birthday party, is he going to, you know, yeah. punish my kid for doing that? Find right. out a coach's philosophy, team, what hours the team is required, you know, to show up and, and practice how many days a week, uh, what's it like on the weekend? Is it a travel team? You know, right. when they say travel team, does that mean <laughs> going to Canada yeah. every weekend or does it mean just going 40 minutes away? You know, there are different definitions yeah. of travel, as I found out. So right. if that if that dad or mom is still in the program, either they're back yeah. crazy or they 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 it, like they like the program, like they're like, wow, okay, right. I, I'm in it again. So yeah. great. So what what was the great things about that you that you're that now your other son exactly. or daughter is in the system? What did you like about it? Yeah, right for all for all the kids listening, we're sorry for Mike Mike's I'm language. Sorry. He, it's just, just language. <laughs> no, I'm totally right. teasing Mike. You just got to be you. Uh, Kayla can he should bleep that out. <laughs> yeah, no, and 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 uh, Christy, you're bringing up a good point too. That uh, and this is the kind of my the final point I wanted to make before we move on to the next question, is that it's like dating in a way. You, you follow yeah. me here. The more people you date, the more you find out what you do and don't like about a potential right. friend or partner. Okay, and and coaching is similar, in the sense of. You should be drawing out how, how am I effectively coached? What do I like? What don't I like? Now, listen, when you get to college, you know, some of us have choices. Some of us don't, but have a clue of how are you coached? Well, because I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things I do as a coach, I can only speak for myself is I like to know how my players are motivated, right? So a player who really knows like, look, I really shut down when you yell at me. All right. 
and again, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be stern with that person, but I'd like to know that, or I'm really encouraged when this type of stuff happens. As long as there's the understanding of, okay, I am, I am the leader of the ship as the coach, and I'm glad that we can have this conversation. I think that's very valuable, but you have to know. So the more parents, going back to what, what you said, Pete, if you have a coach you really don't like, okay, note what you don't like about the coach, the behavior, how that's working with you and your family and your kid. All right. And then don't point the finger. I think that's a super amazing point. Take accountability of, okay, we don't like this as a family or as a player. How are we going to deal with that? All right. And then do some self inspection. Is it me? <laughs> that's always hard to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Right. Am I the one being unruly? Okay. If you're 12 years old, 13 years old, it might be you. It's tough to right. tell anybody at that age though, to yeah. be fair. Um, Moving on here real quick. So listen, we did get one question here. Uh, I don't want to answer this one. John asked, what do they look for in kids as is coaching regarding off ice grades, other extracurriculars? We we definitely covered that in the last episode uh, yeah. with Pete. So make sure to check that one out again. If you haven't heard that episode, it was fantastic. Uh, but uh, Pete, this next one from Kurt was actually a pretty good one. Um, it says, what are the paths to the different levels of college hockey? For example, if you want to play D1, uh, do you have to play at a high level of junior if you want to play a D2, most have to play a junior at some level and so forth. And it says this, understanding there are many different paths. What are the most common paths to college hockey at high or different levels? And let's make the distinction here. You're, you're addressing men's hockey because they're very different for women's That's hockey. That's true. That's yeah. very true. Okay. So we'll talk men's hockey. Go, yeah. Pete. Okay. <laughs> so so on the men's side, uh, I I cringe a little bit every time I hear the word path because <laughs> me, <too>. me path <laughs> indicates that there is a finite way to get somewhere. And there, there really isn't. I mean, there's not a finite way. Okay. If you do a B and C, you're a division one player. If you do a and B, you'd be a division three player. If you do a, you'd be an ACHA club player. Like there's no, there's no set, path that's one of the that's one of the um situations that exists with hockey because we're talking about athleticism right, right? we're talking about athletics and athletics is everything from the physical size of the individual involved uh to their commitment to their skill level all those things so early on development is the most important piece regardless of what level you're playing in youth, you know, you don't have to start as a triple A player when you're eight years old in order to become a division one hockey player. I know division one hockey players who never, ever got picked for a USA hockey select festival. And they still went on to, um, to play division one hockey. Okay. So there's not a set path in that way. One common thread that I will say, having worked with NCAA athletes uh, and specifically Division I athletes, is there was a legitimate passion for the game that while it can be fostered, they have to create it. Somewhere along the line, they're the one that chose I'm going to shoot hundred pucks a day. I'm going to get into the weight room. I'm actually going to pay attention to nutrition. I'm going to ask my parents, can we afford, is there something I can do to get maybe uh, skill lessons, skating lessons, that type of thing. So it, it really, and in, in, in every, honestly, in every professional coach I've talked to about their players, uh, the division one, guys I've talked to, it, it really starts with that individual. So there's not a set path. And that's probably one of the great frustrations, right? Because, you know, you get somebody that I, I got a friend that uh, he, through youth hockey, he played with Brian Janta. Well, you know, Brian Janta moved on and he, he didn't, but he was on the same teams and and playing and so what you can do as an individual uh, as a parent is again we go back to it right sounds like a broken record but you 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 support your your you support your child and what they're doing right 
Um, you begin to have let them make decisions. To me, once a player is around a peewee age, I think that's when they begin to know, you know what, this is something I really want. Mm -hmm. And now you now you start to begin to make choices and decide what is going to be the best path for them as an individual. Is it going away to a prep school? Is it playing U18s and working your way to a, a local junior program? Then as that's happening, you're going to start to know because coaches are going to find you and have conversations with you, college coaches. From those, based on those conversations, if you're a division one player, most guys will never tell you, you have to go to this team and you have to go to that team. But many will share their opinions to prefer, you know what, this is a good league. This would be a good league for your development. So there's no, it's, it's not cookie cutter. That's again, that's probably the, to me, it's one of the most wonderful things about it, but also one of the most frustrating things about it sure. is right. You feel like, well, if I just do this, 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 and this, I'm going here. There's no guarantee. <laughs> And it's there's 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 no guarantees. Yeah, I mean it's it's yeah, athletics, and again, there's so many other factors that enter into this that you can't really say that there is a path as far as it, for your end game. But the path should be what is best for your child. Right. If right, but I think that I... in mind, right, Mike. If you keep that part yeah. in mind, and that's that's the hard part because it's hard because you're getting tugged all over the place. Hey, hey. Bring, come on, bring them over to my team. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. What is best for your child? I mean, that's in general, we send them to the, we try to get them enrolled in schools that are the best for them, right? We try to expose them to other cultural things. Maybe it's music lessons, whatever. What, what's the best for them? You know, nobody ever said, hey, my kid plays piano, but your kid's pretty good. He plays trumpet. You think my kid should play trumpet? No, you don't hear that. You you make the decisions based yeah. on what's best for your child. And it, it still does apply within the athletics. Once they get to a point where they are at a certain level and they do have a certain amount of commitment, then that's another discussion. But up until also, then, right. support. Yeah. I also it, just want, I got to plug this again. Um, there are a lot of colleges that have fantastic club teams, um, Ivy League schools, um, you know, Division I schools. Their club teams are very good and very competitive. Some of Sophia's friends, obviously, they, you know, they weren't good enough to make the, um, the D1 teams, but they're all on club teams and they're just having phenomenal times and extremely competitive. They're getting a great education. They're getting Ivy League school educations and they're still playing hockey for fun, but it is not, don't discount it. It's it's competitive too. And you have to try out for those teams too. Right. right. Here's, here's yeah. a great point with that too, is, is you could argue who loves hockey more than a club player because right. a club player doesn't get sticks, doesn't no. get equipment, has to pay to be on the yeah. team. So they're doing that for the pure love of the game right yeah so that's another path for your kids too and don't underestimate the joy that the kids experience with that yeah i mean i coached club hockey for seven years and it was great i mean we won league championships we went to national tournaments that's right great. i'm still in contact with a bunch of the with, with a bunch of the guys been to their weddings that kind of thing it's it's great it's really good Mike, did you want to chime in? I saw you trying to get in there. Yeah, no, no. I, I just, I think you're yeah. right. I mean, Chrissy brings it up, uh, you know, a lot. And we talk about just, you know, the fact that there are, there's so many alternatives and it's really, you know, I, I think I, <clears throat> I've uh, got away from that path description and, and really it's a journey, right? It's, it's, and everybody's journey is different. If I'm going to New York to California, my journey, maybe, maybe I'm in a Winnebago, maybe I'm on a plane, maybe I'm taking a train, maybe I'm, you know, uh, whatever you know walking taking a bike there's all kinds of journeys but i'm still going to get there like however i'm going to get there and however long it takes me maybe it took me maybe some kids get there quicker than others but wherever your journey brings you is really just something to kind of give you a perspective of saying well this is my journey and it's not mom and dad's journey and i make mom and dad get into it that no no this is my journey i'm paying for it i'm driving you i'm right the journey's my journey our journey and i i find myself saying that all the time like when you 
like I try to really be conscious, like, well, we're not, I'm not talking about we're training and we're doing this. It's you're doing this and I'm helping yeah. you. And right. we see that all the time, right? In 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 sports fans, like, oh my God, our our, our team is doing great, or yeah. oh, we lost the big one last night, yeah. or oh, if we, we would we only won done the this, Stanley Cup, if yeah. we would only done this, we would have done this. I'm like, you didn't do anything. So you know, you just bought beers at the stadium. So I think it's like, you know, to me, find that journey, right, Pete? And I think when you're sitting in the room with a 17, 18, 19 year old man, woman, whatever, girl, boy, with their parents, you want to hear it's their journey, and yeah. then how are they? driving the journey of course you need your parents or a guardian or somebody helping you and sometimes you do need yeah. support and pushing you right and guiding you in that journey because these are kids really <laughs> but where is the line what can you do and, and do coaches see that and say okay here's a player i really want and i can help them or oh my god here's a player that has a parent that feels they're on the same journey and this is not worth it for me to invest my time because I'm going to have to deal with this for four years. Mike, I will say while I was at, uh, while I was coaching in prep school, for the most part, and this was probably, probably the last couple of years. So now we're like uh, 2013 and 2015 in there. The question that I was asked most often from, and this is specifically to division one level, was tell me about their parent that was the question that i was i was asked most often because you know as a recruiter you know whether or not you like a player yeah but i mean the reality is you know unless you're you know a, a mccarr or a crosby or so on and so forth like david right there's a hundred of you a thousand of you right so those types of things matter right so if now you're yourself like you just said if you're self-advocating right and you know you're a parent there to guide in that but if you're one of those over the top parents yeah i've had many kids say parents eh, you know what i just don't this kid here i i just i just can't take this kid based on his parent right I've had coaches say that, but I can, cause I can find another kid just like them. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I've seen that to be the case in some of the triple A teams that we've dealt with. I've seen kids not make the triple A team just because the reputation of the parents and the coaches don't want to deal with them. Uh, so I'm going to take the other kid who's on the bubble, uh, but their parents are great. I'd rather take that kid than deal with a kid who's a little bit better and parents that are pains in the butt. Yeah, it's a cautionary so. tale. <laughs> yeah, yeah or, or the parent, or the parent is a draw, right? It's just okay if they're yeah. not a positive, they're not a negative. They're just not really there. It's almost like like they should be like an official, right? A really good yeah. official. You don't even know the officials there, but you know they're guiding the game and they're struck. They're in the game. They they know they're calling penalties. They're calling balls and strikes. They're they're there, but they're not influencing. They're not pushing. They're just there. They're good. They're positive. They're supportive. Uh, they Respectful. end the game on time. Uh, you know, and, and yeah. nobody's getting killed. That's really like a parent. A parent is in that role of, and that's the heart. Listen, you know, we're all dealing with this. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a tryout or a clinic or a, a program with my kids. And I, I want to go to the corner and talk to the other parents and kind of hang out, but I'm like, oh, what's he doing over there? Oh, how do you do that drill? Or, you know, what, what did they, what did they do over there? And it's so hard not to do that. You know, other than that, just go, go down the street and go to the coffee shop. You know what I mean? Right. But then, then you look like you don't care at all. So it's like a, it's like a, it's, 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 it's a funny, you know, I'll give you it's one story it's all real quick. And then and it, that we heard, um, I think Pete, you were, I think you were with us when we heard this, but we were talking to Lou Varro about um, Joey, uh, about um, Brian Mullen and, and his dad was, uh, you know, working in the garden. Right. I think I, I might've told the story before, but you know, he said, Hey, we want to congratulate you, Mr. Mullen on, on Brian, he's going, he's going, you know, he's going to be leaving for Denmark tomorrow morning. And he's going to the, you know, he made the, the national under 17 team. And he's like, he did. Oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> he goes, yeah, good luck to him. I'm, I'm sure he's going to do great in that. <laughs> I'm like, how? And, and, and when you talk to Brian, he said, my father loved me. We were connected. We were like at the hip, but he didn't care what his, like, and again, this is in the seventies. Right. But still it was like that whole disconnect of, Okay, that's his. He's that's his journey. That's his right. Like yeah. you know, I I made sure he had food this morning, 
He, he got the equipment he needed. And uh, yeah, we'll help him pack. But but at the end of the day, it's his journey. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I, I've been writing notes about this whole section, you know, and, you know, it's so tough. A lot of times I, 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 you know, I talk about being present on this show and being present in the moment. And it's real easy to get lost in one, two, five years from now where my kid's going to go. But at the end of the day, as parents, your child's the number one priority. I, I think we all share that, but we got to look at it like this. And Pete, you alluded to this. The top 1% that make it to college or pro, they have the talent, okay? Let's just assume for a moment, most of us, the 99%, your kid is not in that top 1%. And if you're asking yourself, well, is my kid? You would know. Let me just tell you that right now. You would know, okay? So if you're in that 99%, we're talking about the path or we're talking about the journey, all right? So I'm going to play on words a little bit here, Pete. I actually do think there is a path and journey, and you said it. The path is super amounts of love for the game without you having to provide it. The path is the work. Is your kid waking up early unprompted and shooting pucks? As he said, is he going to the rink? Is she going to the rink? Is she in the garage or he in the garage after school? Are they studying the game on their own? Right. I told the story on this show many times about the day my father told me, if you love it, you'll do it on your own. And he was totally right. That clicked with me for whatever reason. He said at the right time. Right. That's part of the path. All right. The other part here is this, um, and I think we lose sight of this too much in hockey and maybe other sports too. The path is not limited to hockey. You are building habits of success for them to succeed in life, whether it's hockey or work or anything else that they do, being a parent themselves, right? And I wrote that down. They will have other dreams in their life. You are building the tools needed to succeed in those. We cannot lose sight of that. If your kid works his or her butt off all through youth hockey and you support them and they don't make a college team, that kid did not fail because <laughs> that kid is now equipped with unbelievable skills for life. And I, again, I, I, I know people think I'm kind of playing the high road with it. I'm, I really believe in this stuff, right? And, and should you have the chance to play collegiate or even pro hockey, what a gift, right? But look at it like that. That is a gift that you put the time in. But listen, all of us know this. 40 comes quick, and your body is going to tell you that's it. <laughs> you got a whole other half of your life you got to figure out. So I just – I always want to come back to that is change what the win is for you. I'm not saying don't focus on trying to make it. I'm saying have a broader, in my opinion, sense of what making it is, right? So I just I just wanted to say that, all right? Uh, Pete, feel, please feel free to comment, and then I'll kind of turn the conversation here. Yeah, no, listen, I agree with everything you say. You do, you do a great job of, of really condensing it all, and that's what you do, right? That's what you <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, some would say that, yeah. Big yeah, little sandwich out of it. And, and I just, it's really hard for parents to let go control and impact when you spent your whole life essentially trying to control your child's situations, everything from who they play with, schools they go to. Uh, do you want to go to an art class? Do you want to learn a musical instrument? Do you want to play this sport? Do you want to play that sport? So, I mean, I get that having lived that myself as a parent with having two children, but it's incredibly freeing when you can come to that conclusion that it is about them. And I'll do anything you want. That's that if you're into something as long as it's not illegal or immoral, I'm there to support you hundred percent. Just right. tell me what you need and you create this great relationship with your child along the way. And if that in and of itself isn't worth it, I don't know what is. I absolutely agree. I totally agree with that. So friends, here's what I'm going to do. Because this was a like a like a Campbell's chunky soup episode. We got deep into it. It was fulfilling. Uh, I'm gonna make this a two part episode. So I'm gonna end this episode if you're listening, and we're gonna the three of us are gonna pick right up here in a minute. But make sure to stay tuned for the uh, part two of this or part three if you want to look at it like that. This is the trilogy with Pete Whitney on our kids play hockey. So real quick, I'm gonna sign off, and we'll see you again on the next episode. We're gonna talk about developing a program from scratch. And I'm gonna tell you this: whether you're in that position or not. It's an episode you're going to want to hear because you can learn a lot about 
how coaches look at the game, how organiza- organizations look at building a program, and how your kid may or may not fit into something like that. So really quickly, for Christy Cash, Anna Burns, Mike Benelli, and Pete Whitney, I'm Lee Elias. Thanks for listening to this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Stay tuned for the next part uh, next week uh, with Pete Whitney. It's going to be a good one. Have a great day, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.